In the last two lectures, we learned about Python lists, which look like this: a list of yearly revenue for five years. Could you tell me which year is this? You can't. Let me give you some additional information, which is another list of years. Is this additional information going to help you to find the year of the sale? Maybe, maybe not. You may not be hundred percent confident. So in this situation, we need something that clearly tell us this is the year, and this is its yearly sales, a pair of values. Luckily, Python has a key and value pair data structure known as. Rather than storing single object as list do, dictionary store pairs of elements, keys, and values. Dictionary keys are similar to list indices, but rather than accessing an element using index number, in dictionaries we can select elements from the data structure by putting the key in square. Brackets. So let's find the yearly sale number for the year 2018 in the dictionary saved in a variable name sales. This is our dictionary name sales, and in brackets our key, which is in this case year 2018. Let's run this, and there you go. The correct answer: forty-seven thousand. Keys and values are not limited to integers only. It could be anything. For example, take this dictionary, Apple. Apple financial data keys are strings, and values are of different data types: strings, integers, and floats. Let's find Apple's earning per share (EPS) like this. Most financial data available online uses dictionary type structure. Let me make a disclaimer here that this data is for educational purpose only, not an analysis, and should not be used for investment decisions. Now let's create a dictionary. Our hypothetical company arrows financial data. We create dictionaries using curly braces. And name it arrow using the equal sign. And within the curly braces, we define our key, which is revenue in quotes, as it is a string followed by columns and value of the revenue, one million. Please note that the one million is a number and therefore does not require quotes. This is our first key value pair, and I want to add few more data in this dictionary. So, if we want to have more than one key value pair, we need to use a comma like this, and create our next key value pair, cost of sales in quotes, followed by colon and cost number six hundred thousand. Another comma, so we can add another pair, which is administration cost. In quotes and a colon and the number one hundred and fifty thousand. Few more key value pairs. And let's add one boolean data type with the key is profitable year and the value true. Let's run this and our dictionary is created. And let's look up few values like this. Suppose you want to add one more value after the dictionary is created. We want to add a profit figure. We can do it by using dictionary name, which is arrow, then open bracket, close bracket, and in quotes the desired key, which is profit amount, 
followed by an equal sign and the value and hit run let's check if it is now part of our dictionary and yes it is let's say you want to change the value of revenue to 1.2 million we use the same code structure that is dictionary name and in brackets key name revenue in quotes equal sign and the new value 1.2 million and press run let's print this dictionary to check the change and there it is dictionaries are flexible as we have seen that you can change values for an existing key add new values use different data types for keys not just integers as in the case of lists to look up a value dictionary also allow us to have more than one value for a key let's check this suppose you have employees for various departments key is the department name and the value is the employee name department names are accounting marketing hr and it and each department has one employee except it which has four employees in this situation dictionary allow us to use other data structures such as lists so this four employees for it department is a list let's check employees dictionary and key it for employees and now let's confirm the type of this part of the dictionary it is a list this is known as nested data structure with one data structure within a different data structure before we end this lecture let's check another useful method of searching values let's try to find ebitda in apple dictionaries there is no ebitda key and value in apple dictionary and as a result you will find this ugly error key error dictionaries have a related method that is also useful get get looks up values in a dictionary but unlike square brackets get returns none or a default value of your choice if the key is in found like this if you expect lookups may fail get might be a better tool than normal square bracket lookups because errors can crash your program please remember that these lectures can only be useful if you practice so practice as much as you can as the great pianist vladimir horowitz once said the difference between ordinary and extraordinary is practice